name is Leah Gouget Levy. I am a doctoral candidate at the Courthold in the history of fashion, and I'm joined um, by Oriel Cullen, of course. And um, we're going to have a conversation for the next 15 minutes, and hopefully, we'll be able to squeeze in some audience questions as well at the end. So, Oriol is um, a graduate of the Courtauld, mastering in the history of dress, and she's worked at the V&A since 2006. She's senior curator for modern textiles and fashion, and she's curated many exhibitions, including, of course, the wonderful Dior exhibition at the moment, and ball gowns, British glamour since 1950, and hats, an anthology by Stephen Jones. So I think we'll get straight into it. Um, so I thought we would begin, of course, by talking a bit about the Courtauld, since that's why we're all here today. And um, I'm wondering if you could tell us a bit about what drew you to study the history of fashion and kind of what your route to the Courtauld was. Um, well, it, it's interesting because we were just speaking just now about your work on fashion and temporality and, and looking um, at images, historic images. And I remember I studied... Um, history of art as my undergraduate um, and I remember being in a seminar on the Grand Tour and um, a tutor talking about dating portraits and how you know some people could date portraits to within six months um, you know because of, of their knowledge of dress and that was something which you know sort of drew me in um, and then I looked further into that and found the course at the court old um, and at the time that was Aileen Ribeiro who, who was running the course um, and so I was very lucky to be accepted onto that course. Um, there was just six people in our class at the time. One of my lovely classmates is Sana, who's here this evening, and a lovely colleague. Um, and so it was the first year, it was a two-year course, but this was the first year that they had decided to do it in one year. And I think it was quite a roller coaster ride because essentially they just sort of crammed it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite an intense time, yes. but um, very enjoyable. Yeah. So, um, I mean, after after leaving the court hold, Carmen, what was your route into your role now? Um, did you always know that you curation was what you wanted to do, or were were there other options kind of within the history of? fashion for you? Um, I, I didn't have a grand plan, um, I have to say, and I, I think I, I sort of learned a lot about curating while I was on the Courtauld course, and we met with some fantastic curators and had some very interesting tours and visits to museums. Um, and um, so I was, I was very interested in that, but I was also interested in the fashion world. And when I left the Courtauld course, I was doing an internship or volunteering at the Museum of London. And I was also working um, with a fashion stylist at the same time. And it was interesting, uh, after a few months, I was offered a job the same week by the two um, you know, different places. And it, I had to sort of make that decision. Um, and, and I was very glad that I did decide to go to museums. What, what was it that attracted you more to the museum rather than the styling side of things? I, I mean, I, I love the idea. I think with both of those jobs, well, at the time, they were both very behind the scenes. Um, and I think that's a you know, lovely way of working um, and, and having sort of access to things. And, and I think they're, they're both very different in, in terms of pace. And, um, but actually, you know, that idea of being able to work with archives and, and do research. And, and, you know, I think ultimately that's what I had studied. And so that sort of won me over. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, maybe we'll talk a little bit now about the Dior exhibition, which hopefully everybody's seen. It's really wonderful. And it's wonderful to see it tonight as well when there are so few people around. It's amazing. It's an amazing opportunity, really. Um, what, um, what were your... So it was in Paris first, and then it came here. What was kind of the process for bringing, bringing it over? Well, we, we went to see the show in Paris, and, and I have to refer to another lovely audience member um, who's here tonight, Helen, who works at Dior, um, who gave us a wonderful tour of, of the show there. Um, and, and then, you know, sort of... 
very much the feeling at the V&A was that it was a, a, a great show and interesting because we have such a lovely archive of Dior pieces here at the museum. So um, it was sort of something that would fit very well within the museum program. Um, also, um, it was it was something that we very luckily we had a space in our Sainsbury gallery. So. Um, we sort of started, and it was very nice because Sonnet and I started working together on, on this project. Um, and, um, it, you know, it, it was interesting sort of researching that, but also looking at the, the story of our own collections. And, and, and it's very much a sort of V&A approach to always root exhibitions in the collections here. Um, so, yeah, it was a great fit. And, of course, the V&A has a very long history with the House of Dior. Um, you know, it, our wonderful bar suit, which is the first garment that you see when you walk in, um, was gifted to us from the House of Dior since 1960. And we have a great relationship with the archive there that's been ongoing for many years. So, um, and, and you do so many wonderful fashion exhibitions at the V&A. Um, and it, it seems to me that fashion exhibitions in general are having a moment and suddenly people are kind of realising how fantastic they are and flocking to your wonderful exhibitions, which is great to see. And why, I mean, why do you think that this is happening? Why do you think fashion exhibitions in general at the moment, and of course Dior in particular, are proving kind of so popular? Well, I think we're very lucky here at the V&A because it's a museum of design. It's always been incredibly supportive of fashion and textiles. You know, they're, they're, they're a sort of very important strand. And I know that a lot of colleagues who work in art museums, there, there is, they've had a sort of uphill struggle to be recognized as, as being valid and, you know, being an appropriate subject for a museum. But here at the V&A, fashion has always, you know, ha had a good following and, and good support. Um, and for us, it's really you know something when you look back at the, the sort of history there's been some fantastic exhibitions here um, you know obviously everybody refers to Cecil Beaton's 1971 exhibition um, uh, fashion and anthology but also you know really since the the turn of the century there's been fantastic shows and, and even before with you know Amy de la Haye's street style show and Claire Wilcox's radical fashion that you know things that really changed the approach to displaying fashion um, but I think that you know as we've built up our program generally worldwide and I think with social media as well there's such an interest in fashion it's become more accessible for people it's not as exclusive as it was um, so I think there is generally a lot a lot of institutions who are engaging with that which is fantastic um, and I think fashion exhibitions have become a thing in a way um, a must see and you know we really sort of a, a big moment for us was of course the Alexander McQueen show um, which from 2015 um, and that was incredibly well received and, and we've had the same reception here yeah. Yeah. yeah and and so what what is it that you um, is or do you have a, a hope that people take away something in particular from from your exhibitions or um, yeah it, did, with the Dior exhibition for example is there is there something that you're hoping that visitors will leave with or have learned from their visit yeah I mean I think we we sort of hope that there would be um, a recognition of sort of Christian Dior the man behind the brand certainly um, also we looked at the story of Dior in Britain which you know we found fascinating um, and, and looking into that because it was a story that hadn't really been told before um, but also just that it's a moment where you can sort of in a way sort of paraphrasing Christian Dior when he spoke about the evening in the ballroom we always say you know he spoke about suspending reality and you know for a moment you could become something else and I think there's a nice parallel in terms of visiting an exhibition like that it's a sort of stepping out of these interesting times that we live in and you know and and sort of just enjoying and, and, and sort of letting all of these things wash over you, whether or not you're interested in all the label texts that we spent hours putting <laughs> yeah. together, <laughs> or you just want to walk through and say, I love that dress, I like that one, you know. So I think it has to work on, on many levels, um, yeah. but just that it's a positive experience for people. So if you want to go down and, and learn more about the, the sort of House of Dior and the, you know, the statistics and the dates and, and Christian Dior himself, it's there, but also that it works on another level and um, that you can just enjoy being in the space as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
perhaps you've partially answered this, but um, how, how, so how do you think that the Dior exhibition and, and others like it impact on people's understanding and perception of fashion kind of more generally? Well, I think it's interesting because we've also, at the same time, had this fantastic um, Mary Quant exhibition, yeah. which has been incredibly popular. Um, and it's been really nice to see the two of those in tandem um, because Quant is very much, you know, it's, it's wonderful, Dior is the haute couture, Quant is the, the ready-to-wear story, but it's also a story about women, um, yeah. you know, and, and the curators Jenny Lister and Steph Wood looked at the, the story of not only Mary Quant as a woman in the workplace, but also the women who were wearing her clothes and drawing out very personal stories. Yeah. And I think that's been incredibly strong. I mean, I love going into that show because there's so many spontaneous conversations happening. Yeah. Um, a lot People just talking to each other and saying, oh, I had one of those, and, and you know, and, and I've bumped, you know, That's come amazing. across, uh, yeah, a few yeah. moments where people are chatting away, and then they sort of say, nice to meet you, and, you know, walk off, and you think, wow. Um, so I think that's fantastic, that yeah. there, you know, there is this aspect of fashion and, and clothing that's very democratic, you know, it's not an exclusive subject, yeah. it's something we can all relate to, whether or not you like fashion, you know, we all wear clothes, and I think it's, it's a great entry point, in a way, for people to engage with museums. Um, mm. You know, and I, I think for us, our, our permanent gallery um, is a very important space in the museum, and, and there's some great future plans happening. If I can say, Sonnet, his Sonnet is leading a fantastic project, looking into sort of the future of that gallery. Yeah. Um, and I think we're very aware today that, that fashion has a very important role to play, not just the sort of industry and the people who work in fashion, but also the kind of messaging and, and the history and, and yeah. social culture around it. Yeah. Um, so we've got just a couple of minutes left. So I wonder if we have a few questions from the audience at all. Anybody? <laughs> yes, um, at the back. You might have to shout, sorry. So just talking about the ballroom space in, in the Dior exhibition. So um, obviously, as we mentioned, the show was in Paris. Um, and when we went to see it there, it was in the wonderful nave of the Musée Art Décoratif. And I'm sure a lot of you will know. And it's an incredible space architecturally. And that really sort of gave me palpitations because I thought, oh, we've got to re, you know, relocate this and, and try and give people a good experience in, in a gallery which is very different. Um, and of course, we worked with a fantastic exhibition designer, Natalie Crenier, who designed the show in Paris. Um, and so she created this wonderful hexagonal space, which was very different to the Paris show because, of course, we couldn't replicate the columns and, and the height of that space. Um, so she went for a much more futuristic feel, as you, as you mentioned. Um, but we worked with the same company um, that had worked in Paris on, on this sort of ambience and the space, a, a company called La Meduse, who produced the AV um, film that you see projected onto the ceiling and the walls, and also this the wonderful um, soundscape that sort of gives a, a, a sort of sense and atmosphere in there. Um, I think, you know, we have the, the sort of turntable as well, which is the kind of little something extra, try, trying to bring movement, you know, of course the age-old problem of displaying fashion in museums is of course the, the movement issue, so that sort of gives a certain sense of people moving around the space. Um, but we were really keen to have seats in that space. Uh, that's our sort of one thing. We had battles with Natalie and we really, you know, wanted people to be able to come in there and it was a seven minute loop um, on the, the AV. So to just kind of come in as the final room and just have a moment to reflect and just, because I feel a lot of the time in exhibitions you sort of eject it out into the real world and it's kind of, you haven't really had a moment to sort of take it all in and reflect upon it and, and the magic is kind of lost in a way once you're outside. Um, so it's been wonderful how Natalie's been able to incorporate that as a sort of staying space for people um, and then there's a little ante room as, as you leave. Um, so it was, it was fantastic working with her on that space. So. 
think, unfortunately, we're out of time, but thank you so much. Thank you, Leo. Um, I think everyone can agree it's been a really great talk. Oh.